Let's start off with a couple of Tatum and Al connections here. Tatum has been amazing lately, and Al Horford, who's been amazing his entire life. The reason this is underrated is because the Celtics get out in transition with speed, and then Tatum, he slows it down. And at a surface level, this has been a regular criticism of JT, but here it's the patience to wait for the double, the wait for the advantage. And it looks like he's in trouble here before he floats a crazy accurate pass over the defense to Sam Hauser, who swings to Horford cash money. Yeah, it's an interesting play by Tatum because he actually sees he's got Jones on him, which is a mismatch for him, you know, point guard guarding him and Cornette comes over to set the screen, but Tatum doesn't want the switch. He wants to stay with the mismatch. The double comes, he spins away from it and his court vision has just improved so much every single year and this year is no different. He floats a beautiful pass, swing, swing, easy three in the corner. Yeah, I love like Tatum gets the easy mismatch on Trey Jones and Horford recognizes it and takes Wemby completely out of the play over to the other the side so he can't impact the play at all because Chetty's double team Tatum Cornet kind of flashes to the middle taking buckets away from Hauser making that the easy pass for Tatum and everybody spaces really well Pritchard comes up Hauser comes up and that makes it really hard for Wemby who's able to kind of guard multiple guys because he's so insanely large but he's not able to guard both Hauser and Horford due to the spacing of Hauser swing swing the big dog splash love it A similar play here JT gets the screen from Drew Holiday OKC switch and their defense gets a little nervous here. SGA sags off of Al Horford to increase the pressure on Jason Tatum. And that's all he needs. Horford cashes in again. First of all, the Celtics are really hard to guard with Pritchard and Hauser out there. They're both top 10 in contested catch and shoot possessions this year. Oklahoma City, like this is the, the gravity of Jason Tatum, right? When he, after he gets the screen, they basically go one, two, two zone against him and are just completely ignoring the rest of the Celtics and Tatum. <laughs> it's just such an easy pass over to Horford. And again, just showing his uncertainty selfishness, his maturity, and the way he's approaching the game this year, wide open three. Yeah, and it really speaks to the development of Al Horford. Not many 35 plus year olds can talk about that development, but his trigger and his release has become so much quicker. We're like this, like he doesn't even look that open. And if you're a Thunder fan, you're like, on one hand, you're like, don't overhelp, but you have to in the NBA against these superstars. And Horford's gotten to a point where you can be one pass away and like Shea has no chance in getting back to Horford. Another big three. Sticking with Al Horford, the man is 37 years old and can apparently guard everyone on the OKC Thunder guys. Yeah, Al Horford's defensive versatility is just absolutely insane, man. Like he starts on chat, gets the switch, follows Misic, right? Is that his? That's it, I right? believe so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's he's all over Misic, makes him force a kick out, and then he's somehow back onto Chet, then back onto Misic, contests the jumper, and it's off of OKC going the other way. Constantly impressed and enthralled by the existence of Al Horford. His ability to be able to guard multiple players in one possession, shutting down someone like Chad Hongram, who's been incredible this season, switching, protecting the rim, communicating with peel switches. You name it, Al Horford's able to do it on any given night. Another underrated defensive play here, Sam Hauser, proven himself to be a solid one-on-one -on -one defender, but he does get caught up on screens and the smarter teams in the league are starting to learn this. Here, he's chasing Obi Toppin around a Miles Turner DHO, and this isn't the pure purest example of Peel switching, but he points out the switch to KP while on the chase, gets a hand on Miles Turner, freeing up Porzingis to protect the rim. This just highlights how incredibly impactful Kristaps Porzingis is as a rim protector. I mean, that's Obi Toppin coming at him with a full head of steam. And he just absolutely rejects him. And, you know, Hauser does a good job getting over the screens, but he also stays engaged in the play once Porzingis is defending at the rim, boxes out Miles Turner, fights his white ass off, and the Celtics end up rebounding and are going the other way. <laughs> yeah, look, Porzingis completely engulfs Obi Toppin at the rim. Like the seven foot three Latvian dude, like Obi Toppin's like, uh oh, I got absolutely nothing going here. But man, the development of Sam Hauser into a gritty kind of do the little things guy, as opposed to just being a shooter. The, to be able to communicate the switch, that's one thing. But then to battle Miles Turner and get the rebound away from him, that's such an important aspect of, of the defense right here is if you are going to have pausing has come over and help, then that's what always leads to those offensive rebounds. Like you force the miss and then the big just comes in. Sam Hauser gets his big white ass in, the, in his face and uh, gets the rebound. 
How about some more underrated defense? And shout out to Caitlin Cooper, who initially highlighted this on Twitter. The Celtics in a 2-1-2 zone here with Drew at the helm in the middle. What stands out to you guys here? Joe's been actually doing this quite a bit with Drew sort of just playing kind of this bizarre free safety role in the middle of the defense. And it's just really difficult for opposing offenses. They don't see defense like this very often. And the Celtics are really connected. They communicate it. Their breakdowns can happen very easily when you're playing a unique style of defense that guys aren't used to and they're just everywhere i mean you can tell that they have drilled this they know when to switch they know when to pass somebody off to the next defender and it just baffles indiana yeah the level of communication execution on this position is so impressive like pritchard goes over the top kind of like he's in drop but then he peels off to take jackson you're like oh no pritchard's on jackson drew comes in pushes pritchard out hauser picks up the cutter and pritchard's out to matherin the level of communication like picking up different guys is so impressive and then you end up with the best matchup that you possibly can with Tatum on TJ McConnell and like the combination of foot speed and length of Tatum just makes it impossible for TJ to get that off. Easy turnover. Switching back to offense and look at Sam Hauser guys. The bag is infinitely deep. The absolute slow motion freezes time, rewinds it, speeds it back up and lays it in and it comes out of an action that I absolutely love. Jason Tatum setting the pick in the pick and roll and actually rolling and actually making okay to D in contact with his pick so it just causes the <laughs> corner help to crash in on Tatum because he's actually rolling to the rim instead of popping that opens up for Sam Hauser to drive the close out and Hauser the self-awareness of this guy hey you know what I'm not great at accelerating but you know what I am good at decelerating so that's going to be my new go-to dribble drive move he's gone to this a couple times this season the deceleration love it Absolutely. Deceleration, something I'm becoming very familiar with, although not at an elite level like Sam Hauser here. Let's move on here. Tatum's court vision on display here makes the half court post entry pass to Al Horford, another Tatum Al connection, and it's easy money for Al on the mismatch. This type of play is just like all chemistry. You can tell these guys have been playing together for a long time because Al sees he's got Buddy healed on him and immediately just posts him up in semi transition. Tatum's got his head up, looking up the court, sees it, and it's a pinpoint pass. That is not an easy pass. He makes it look easy. And then Al down low, you know it's going in. Unsurprising that Al Horford features a lot in the underrated plays. Underrated yeah. plays being made by underrated players. He runs the floor, easy mismatch. And like Tatum gets the on-target pass. But because of Al's kind of like good passing ability, he doesn't necessarily throw like a fake pass, but he's kind of got the ball up. He's ready to make a pass back out to the perimeter, which holds Turner from doubling Al and if he Turner had kind of like really crashed in on Al there then he would have just made an easy pass out to the perimeter buckets well it's been another fun week of Celtics basketball so we've got some bonus underrated plays starting with Al oh. Horford and a sneaky judo throwdown a discarding <laughs> of the body of pesky Aaron Neesmith guy do you see anything here or is it, is it me overthinking things I see an assault maybe an arrestable <laughs> offense on my guy Aaron Neesmith but it's just like Al is just he protects his teammates man and he's just the best teammate. Everyone always says it. We say it. The only thing more beautiful than the way he plays basketball are is his eyes. Look, Neesmith doing his usual nonsense, trying to injure Al Horford. Little does he know he's uninjurable. And, you know, look, <laughs> You, you can't mess with Master Splinter. You come at him, he might be a bit old, but he's just going to hit you. Use a little hip check, bang. Uh, you're on the floor, something's going the other way. Sticking with the biff here, Peyton Pritchard saves the ball. Luke Cornett, great hands, catches, goes up, blocked by Isaiah Jackson. Luke realizes he's not getting the foul call and just bodies up in the post. Jackson takes offense to this, pushes the corn dog down to the ground, guys. Luke is just savage here, straight up ignoring the biff and opting for some gentlemanly team building high five action <laughs> look luke, luke cordett's you know he's got to earn his role in the nba and you know sometimes a little half-hearted flop and getting under the other team's skin is how you earn your role in the nba and luke's <laughs> works hard and does the dirty work and these high fives just show you the true value of having a bench guy like luke <laughs> this is the definition of not feeding the trolls <laughs> and finally because we love this here o'shea Brissett, first of the floor guys leading to of course the most exciting play in basketball a Sam Hauser soaring above the clouds alley-oop slam we love the first to the floor we love slam Hauser we love fast breaks we love Celtics basketball I mean this play <laughs> has absolutely everything honestly I love 
the beginning here. It's like O'Shea gets the strip, he flips to Porzingis, and it's just bang. One pass, two passes, three passes, one dribble from Derek White, Jalen Brown, he's got his head up. He's just looking up there. You see him up there, he looked me dead in my eyes, and I just said, fuck it. 